Uh, welcome back now to Business Insights to our discussion uh, segment. In March this year, the Monetary Policy Committee MPC of the Central Bank of Nigeria raised the benchmark interest rate by 50 basis points in a bid to tackle rise in inflation, marking the sixth consecutive rise. Following previous effort of the CBN, there was a dip in December 2022. However, inflation rate climbed to 22.04% in March, which led to 10 of the MPC's 12 members voting in favor of the rise. In April 2023, the headline inflation rate rose to 22.22%. Now, to help me out with all of these numbers, I have joining me right now international finance and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed. Many thanks for joining me on Business Insights, Mokhtar. All right, Mukhtar, if you can hear me now. In March, in an aggressive move to contain the nation's uh, inflationary uh, trend, uh, the CBN um, actually raised uh, the, the MPR um, and uh, it was uh, increased to 18%. However, the inflation, uh, headline inflation, maintained its upward trend in April, rising by 18 basis points to 22.22%. Why does uh, Nigeria's inflation keeps on surging despite interest rate hike. What's the reason for this disconnect? Well, thank you, Justin. I think the reason for the disconnect is uh, because um, we are not treating the we are only treating the symptom. We are not dealing with the real issues. The real issue that um, is causing inflation in Nigeria has to do with our uh, exchange rate volatility because most of our product we import it from outside the shore of this nation. Basically, that is the main issue that we are coupling with, not um, um, whether there is uh, production, inflation, uh, in, 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 um, inflation induced production, I mean, inflation due to production or um, other microeconomic factors or other factors. But mainly, if we are able to address the, uh, in the FX issue that has to do with liquidity in the system and meeting legitimate demands, especially from our manufacturing sector, we will be able to um, curtail inflation. But as it stands now, uh, what you think you gain one hand, you lose your other, the other way because of inflation. So I think the CBN have been um, um, dodging from addressing the um, um, exchange rate volatility, especially since the CBN governor decided that they will no more be servicing the bureau de change. So, and they didn't create a market for those people that normally patronize the bureau de change, especially the, uh, the man manufacturers. Okay, but uh, I don't know, in my head, I'm thinking that uh, aside from some of these issues that you have mentioned, uh, issues like uh, maybe uh, insecurity, uh, maybe the high cost of diesel, and maybe some other factors, are they contributory factors to this uh, disconnect that we do have? Yeah, when you look at this security, I think it contributes. Um, that has to do with uh, when you talk of food security. We've not been able to get that, especially from food that comes from the northern part of Nigeria. We've had challenges with that. Uh, you could say that also have, have, have drive inflation in the area of food. Um, when you talk about um, um, cost of diesel, yes, but again, when you look at where we were before now, Diesel was selling at an all-time high of about 900 naira per liter, but today it's selling between 650 to 630. So definitely, if you are looking at that, then uh, with the with the uh, reduction in price of diesel, we are supposed to see cost of production comes down. But like I said, what we gain in terms of bringing down cost of production, we lose in terms of the exchange rate volatility. You can see that play in the area of the energy, especially with diesel. Okay, fine. Uh, so, so I have uh, spoken to some analysts and uh, some of them are anticipating a 25% basis point increase uh, on the MPR when the MPC concludes uh, today. Uh, what are your thoughts, uh, really? Okay, my thoughts is that if I, if I were in their shoe, I think for now I, I would tend to um, hold the rate because that's not really helped. Um, like you said in your introduction, we see rate hike going up and then uh, inflation still going above um, the rate hike even. So definitely not we are making any progress with that because, like I said, we are not addressing the fundamental issues. And what we do sometimes is just copy and paste from what we see other developed nations are doing. We just want to do the same thing. We, 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 we don't tend to bring our own. Uh, or Nigerian factor into it, our economic um, challenges. So um, the incoming administration is coming in. We don't know what their 
the economic plan will be. Uh, we are not sure that they will continue with the current. Um, I said in the introduction of your report, we are not too sure about the CBN governor because we heard that he will be going on study leave. So definitely, uh, if I were in the multi-policy decision um, committee, I would say, look, you know, let's 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 maintain the status quo for now and let's see the direction of a new administration when they take over. Okay, now, so a simple question right now would be, what happens uh, if the MPC continues to hike this rate and yet uh, the inflation numbers are also rising? What happens with our economy? Well, what happens is that hardship increases on the people, consumer power will continue to get low, and then that will affect companies, especially the manufacturing sector, because a lot of people will not be able to buy their goods or, their, or patronize the intents of services. And when we see that play out, then we, we, we will see rising unemployment also playing its, its role there. And of course, the GDP will continue to decline, and we may end up going to recession. That's the, 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 the long and short of it if we continue in this um, direction addressing the key issues. Okay, fine. Uh, you, uh, in passing, you mentioned um, the administration uh, coming uh, into board in the next couple of days, and uh, you don't know what um, direction it may want to follow. But still on that, uh, with them having the infrastructural deficit on their hands uh, to tackle with, what should be the immediate focus to stem this tide in our uh, uh, monetary policy? I think the immediate focus, like I said, in the, uh, if the CBN governor is still there or we have a new governor, or I think the first thing we need to do is to see how we can address these effects challenges that have affected every Nigerian and every business. So once you do that, then you've, you've addressed about 70% of inflationary pressure. Then from there, you begin to look at the um, cost of doing business. Uh, what, what, what have you done? And in terms of the direct intervention that CBN has done in some key sector. What are really the true reflection? Are there true reflection in our economy? So uh, for me, the main issue is to address these effects. Let's see how we can attract more effects into the system, either through foreign direct investment or for foreign investors. And again, we can always know that um, by the by by the by the um, cabinet of the new administration, we hopefully think this cabinet should hit the ground running. If they do that, then we'll see those positive vibes come into the economy, and we could see a game changer in terms of um, um, policies that will help governize the economy. All right, good thing you've mentioned the um, capital inflows that have continued to decline over time, which has uh, remained a key concern for the MPC. Uh, you talked about portfolio investment and other you know, um, avenues that we could actually get this, but how can we attract this needed inflows? For instance, some people uh, believe it are very hopeful that uh, with uh, the Dangote refinery coming on, um, on stream that um, the pressure uh, for demand for FX might um, actually reduce. But how can we leverage on that? Well, definitely I agree with that. But again, you have to ask us uh, when will Dangote refinery really start production? Well, we have that from June. They are expected to do something from next month. I don't know how feasible that is. Um, Justin, I can tell you that that is going to be very, very tough because we've not done, we've not seen pre, um, there are other um, processes in terms of that. And remember that even then, uh, they've told us that even they have the capacity of 650,000 barrels per day of crude oil, but they will be doing, they will only do 50% 50, 50 capability at the start. And then that will improve in sometime in January 2024, where they will be trying to meet 100%. So definitely, um, that will help, but in the in the short term, we might not see that uh, um, helping us. I think the best thing is to come up with policy that will attract um, um, foreign direct investors, and then one of those policies begin to to look at how you can reduce the the, 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 the difference between the uh, the parallel market and the the the, 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 the import export market. And the only way that you can do that is to increase uh, flu of FX in the in the parallel market. And the way, how do you do that? Then you need to go through the banks because now are you going to tell the banks to begin to create a, a, a foreign um, uh, decks on, on in their account? So when I go in there, I have my details. I want to do transaction. I can do a seamless transaction. The other way is to empower the bank also to be involved in FX trading because some of these banks have a last shown of um, FX out of in the shore of this country where they just bring it back into this country and begin to look at it via market demand. But all this can only be achieved 
if you can reduce the gap between the parallel and the and the and the and the import export market. If you do that, then investors will have confidence to come to the to your to your to the market. Because when the difference is is almost a hundred and some percent, no shrewd investors want to be investing in such an economy because you must repatriate your money back. And how if you are bringing it at four hundred and something, then you are repatriating at seven hundred and something. It doesn't make business sense at all. Okay, now so my uh, other um, issue is uh, that of um, economic growth. With all of these uh, issues that we have had. Uh, uh, interest um, high and uh, inflation surging uh, 22 uh, over 22 percent. Uh, with all of this, are you worried that um, it might affect um, the nation's economic growth? Yes, I'm very worried. It's already affecting it. Um, again, for the past eight years, we've not seen the kind of good we expect from this economy comparable to the, the, the previous years before this administration came into power. But then uh, the every true Nigerian, every economy will be worried about what we're seeing, especially when you look at the debt profile by and by revenue. Then you are very, very worried because um, we, we, we are not even attracting investors into our economy. Oh, and then we are pouring so much to, to deal with infrastructure uh, decay. And again, we are not even able to meet those demands. And the only way we can meet it is to attract uh, investors uh, through the PPP. And if we do that, then you begin to say, okay, fine, but as it stands now, that is not happening. And that will not happen so soon, even if this income administration have all the magic words. Uh, on the final note now, Mukta, just before we we'll let you go, I just want you to just um, pass a message across uh, to this incoming administration that should be around in four or five days. Uh, specifically, Nigerians uh, go to the market each day and um, the prices uh, continue to surge and change, uh, sometimes almost by 100%. You know, I just am worried because uh, we are actually getting to a place of food insecurity with the uh, CPI rising by the day and, of course, uh, the issue of um, uh, food inflation not being sorted out. What should we be doing right now as regards food security so that at least we can have foods in our stomach, even in as much as we are having infrastructural deficit? Well, uh, you see, that is what they call stomach infrastructure, <laughs> and that's what we need. We need now. Uh, we need stomach infrastructure, and I think uh, you hit the nail on the head. Uh, we need to look at our food security, and then we need to address. If we want to do that, we need to address this issue of insecurity, especially in the northeast and also in some of the food basket of Nigeria, like uh, Niger State, um, Benue State. We need to do that as soon as possible. And if then, if we want to address the larger front of infrastructure, we need to begin to attract foreign direct and portfolio investors into our economy. And we can only do that with green right policies that will drive them into our economy. And if you ask me what the new administration will have to do, I think three things I want them to do first, as soon as they come in, address food security through um, 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 addressing insecurity and coming up with measures that can allow seamless transportation of these goods from one point of Nigeria to another. Secondly, address the effects volatility, especially the difference between the parallel and the and the, and, and the import-export uh, mm. market. Mm. And I think, um, lastly, see how you can uh, begin to attract uh, foreign direct investors into Nigerian economy and then look at what you gain from that, invest it into social investment like health, All care, right. and education. If we do that, we are on the path to prosperity. All right, thank you so much. I have been speaking with Mukhtar Muhammad, the International Finance and Economic Analyst. Thanks for all of the useful insights that you have brought on the show today. My pleasure, Justin. Still have a pleasant day. Thank you. All right, and that's the size of the show for today. Business Insights will return at the same time at 9.30. You may want to join us again for that. Bye for now.